Hello guys, uh, welcome back uh, to another week uh, with the Underwater Tribe. Today is Monday and uh, we're gonna have again this week uh, three shows, Monday, Wednesday and uh, Friday. So today we have something new for the first time. Mike is not here, I'm here alone. So as slowly, slowly things are getting back to movement here in Bali, maybe this will be sort of a new normal because uh, if we have a little something going on, we also have to go to do it. So we might be not both of us on studio together. However, every time that uh, we can make it together, we will be here together. You will see him for a moment appearing actually on, uh, on the interview because we pre-recorded that. And that will be funny because no mic and then mic again and then no mic. Talking about the interview today, guys. Today, as an interview, we have uh, really uh, Johanny from uh, the Coral Triangle Center. She is the executive director at the Coral Triangle Center. The Coral Triangle Center is uh, uh, an organization based uh, actually here in Bali. It's a beautiful, uh, um, uh, actually, center that we have uh, of not too far from our office uh, here in Bali. And they do... Uh, organize a project uh, into conservation. Today, on uh, Monday, all this week, uh, all our topics, they're going to touch uh, uh, very much, uh, cons uh, or they're going to be on conservation and uh, with the Coral Triangle Center, as well as uh, some photographer coming up, uh, Pepe Arcos on Wednesday, who will bring also some beautiful artistic images uh, taken during a conservation project. And then we're going to talk uh, also about conservation and more with uh, uh, Bart uh, and uh, Maureen, Bart Jones and Maureen Schirmock on Friday that also they will uh, talk a lot about conservation that has been happening in Raja Ampat uh, together a lot with some uh, beautiful story of their uh, dive career. Right, so guys, if you are checking in uh, now, please let me know in the comments, uh, say hi. And I see we have uh, St Steve and Miho. Make sure that uh, you stay active on the page. Otherwise, Mike will be blaming me and will say like, oh, the show didn't perform as well as when I am over there. So please, let's make sure that we can continue to keep uh, the rating as good as normally is. Right, so conservation week uh, coming up uh, for sure, like that's one of the topic that uh, at the underwater tribe uh, and any divers uh, love to be a part of. So we love the ocean and the environment and uh, we definitely uh, must uh, engage into conservation. And in today's show, we will be touching uh, topics that can concern all of us. What I'm saying is uh, concerning in a way that uh, all of us can uh, apply certain, uh, let's say, uh, rules to actually be better also when you practice uh, diving and so on. So we will have uh, two interviews uh, uh, broken down. First, we will give you a little bit of an orientation about uh, the Coral Triangle Center in Bali. And then after that, uh, we will be also talking about uh, a great program called the Green Fins that uh, it's dedicated more in details for divers and diving center about things that uh, we can and cannot do when we go out there diving. So keeping a good etiquette is a very important thing for all of us. Uh, and it's always good to have a refresh, uh, um, refreshing reminder about the things that uh, we should all do um, while diving or joining a diving operation. All right, so why don't we jump straight into the interview right now? And here is our first interview with uh, really Johanny from the Coral Triangle Center based here in Bali. Hello, really, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming out. Uh, really, from the Coral Triangle Center here in Bali. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you, Mike. It's great to be here. and Nice to see you, nice, Mike and Luca. And nice to see you as well. Great to have you here. So really, here you brought us uh, a presentation about the Coral Triangle Center. 
that we would like to show to our audience. It's a great uh, initiative uh, and um, great organization that we actually have very close to us here in Bali. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I'm happy to present our work with the Coral Triangle Center. And I've been working in, in this field for more than 25 years now. And we saw that um, building local capacity for marine cons conservation is really essential. And we try to turn knowledge and science into on the ground action. Here you see uh, the map of uh, the Coral Triangle region. And um, this has been uh, produced by many experts around the globe based on uh, primary and secondary data. And in the center, you see the dark red uh, that de delineates the Coral Triangle region and includes six countries, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, Timor-Leste, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands. And this region is so important as it's a global refuge for coral reefs around the globe and can help replenish coral reefs uh, at that scale. So it's very important to uh, preserve this area um, of global significance. But the challenge, of course, that we all know is, is uh, immediate and very urgent. Uh, we look at uh, destructive fishing practices, overfishing. On the right side, you see an island. Uh, this is in Komodo National Park, Pula Misa, and it's um, completely um, uh, dry, there are no trees left, no fresh water, and the people also don't want to move. And they also resort to um, yeah, more destructive fishing practices. And in this context, it's um, very difficult to achieve conservation. You have to have uh, strategies that look into conservation, but also alternative livelihood programs for local communities, mm -hmm. and also a lot of uh, education and capacity building. But as you see, the the challenge is that so many people, more than 130 million people, depend on those coastal and marine resources in the Coral Triangle. So it's all about uh, how to engage people to care for their own resources. So um, I'm a co-founder of the Coral Triangle Center. We established it in 2010 and we celebrate our 10 year anniversary. And we really wanted to focus on um, engaging, educating and inspiring people uh, to help care for the coral reef ecosystems and oceans in general. And this is um, our mission uh, moving forward. So what do we do? Uh, we do a lot of practical training for local government officials, for uh, local communities. Uh, we focus more and more on uh, specific groups within the community, such as women groups who are very effective in galvanizing communities in conservation and also, of course, youth, uh, because they are the leaders of tomorrow. So we try to uh, make customized training that transfers knowledge in the best uh, possible way. But we're also still very much active on the ground, um, trying to achieve conservation with groups that live there um, in those areas. Yeah, so. so the capacity building, we, over the 10 years, uh, we have trained more than 5,000 people. And most of them are uh, government officials who are involved in planning and managing uh, marine protected areas. It's very practical training, how to develop a management plan or how to engage local communities to how to monitor a reef, for example, or identify fish uh, spawning aggregation sites. And we now have 26 practical training modules, basically three to five days where we immerse the groups in this uh, very practical and enticing training. And this is open for um, communities, for NGOs, but also for dive operators. So we do a lot of training uh, to engage people and, and give them the tools to help uh, save the coral reef areas. Here you see the map of our um, field sites on the ground where we have uh, people working side by side with the local stakeholders. Our uh, longest program is in Nusa Penida, Marine Protected Area offshore Bali and uh, the Banda Islands in the Moluccas. And we have uh, em embarked into three new sites in the Moluccas, Leyase Islands near Ambon 
Sula and uh, Buano um, Rain Protected Area. And um, we are active in two sites in Timor-Leste, in Altauro Islands and Lekisa. And um, you both, Mike and Luca, you know it very well and you produce a beautiful video for us, uh, for our programs that has been very well received in Timor-Leste and also uh, for a wider audience. So that was great. Excellent, thank you. Just to give you some feeling for the uh, others, for the sites. Um, so Nusa Panida, it's a very iconic site with species like the mola sunfish, manta rays, and um, it's very um, highly diverse in terms of coral and reef fish, but also on the heavy pressure uh, with tourism, with more than maybe 300,000 people now visiting uh, Nusa Panida every year. And so it's really uh, a balance, striking a balance between um, conservation and also marine tourism development. That's why the engagement of dive operators and the marine tourism industry is very important um, to help uh, safeguard this beautiful place. Banda is very different, very remote in the middle of the Banda Sea. And there, the approach is much more uh, with local communities building on their traditional marine tenure systems to uh, set up uh, community-based MPAs, marine protected areas, and engage the communities in caring for their reefs. And it's uh, why we select those two sites so we can compare different settings, different threats, and also um, implement different uh, approaches to management. And it's a lot of sharing and lessons learned we can then uh, share with our uh, other colleagues in, in conservation. And uh, same for uh, Buano and Sula. Sula, of course, is a beautiful place, uh, an incredible green nestle turtle site. Um, and also Buano is, is beautiful when it comes to coral diversity. Leyase also has um, a dugong population there. And it's, uh, again, those three sites are very different in nature. And we learn a lot by uh, comparing what works, what doesn't work in those different sites. And they're logistically also different. For example, Buano is very difficult to reach versus Leyase is much more closer to Ambon and has different aspects therefore about management. And Atauro and Likisa, same um, beautiful places. And Atauro is also close to Dili relatively and has quite a potential for uh, tourism as well. So we also work closely there with dive operators to uh, establish a code of conduct for uh, best practices in uh, diving there in, in Atauro. I just want to emphasize again this whole um, this importance of engaging local communities and also ensure their livelihoods are sustainable. This is a great program we call CNET that we implemented in the Arafura Sea, in Marauke and in Ngan, in the Kei Islands. And in Marauke, we supported fishermen to uh, help collect the ghost nets, those uh, terrible nets discard, discarded in the ocean and leave a trail of destruction behind them. And so, um, they collect those fish nets and uh, build them. And we were able to help them export it to markets in Europe. Uh, in this case, in Slovenia, where they make uh, towels out of those high quality uh, fishing nets. In this way, we help clean the environment. Uh, the fishermen have a good alternative income, but also we help supply a, a sustainable product on the market. And the women groups, um, we help them engage um, to use the bycatch of fish. For example, a um, lot of flying fish, they not used uh, a lot, so they would just be uh, discarded. Uh, the women groups were able to actually help uh, make products out of the bycatch, like flying fish, and make creepy creepy small snacks that they could sell on the local markets. And their income increased with 80%. Wow. So we actually help make those uh, fishing activities uh, much more productive more sustainable and at the same time provide a better income for the local communities. So women for us are key uh, groups. As I said before, they are often leaders in their community, able to galvanize a community behind um, marine conservation programs. And we established a women leaders forum across the six countries in the Coral Triangle. And they share lessons learned, um, how they actually address threats and engage their community. We gave them also small grants. For example, the women in Timor-Leste 
utilize that to set up um, a waste program. And the women uh, in Ataro are now actually setting an example how to manage waste and make uh, products uh, out of that and sell it uh, on the local markets for tourism and other local use. Great. And so it's a, a great example, again, how women can play such an important role. And they are also critical in post-harvesting of fish, of course, and other coastal activities. And the other learning network is um, connecting the government executives, governors, mayors, districts, and provinces who are often at the full phase of conservation and have to make important decisions on investments. And we give them a lot of information uh, how to weigh in the environmental um, interest in all those decisions so they can make more informed decisions about sustainable investments in their area. And this is um, a great program called the Greenfins program. And Martin, our marine conservation advisor, will talk about this more in detail after me. But uh, it's a great way to engage the dive operators in um, adhere to a code of conduct underwater, which is a certified program under the United Nations Environmental Program. And the dive operators have been great allies in um, conserving the coral reefs and helping with uh, cleanups and uh, very committed to help preserve um, the conservation value of the sites and set an example for their customers. Now, as I said, the youth is also an increasingly important group for us to reach out to. Uh, we organize a lot of uh, learning activities and beach cleanups. This is taken here in New Salambongan with the local school children. They're very uh, aware of the impact of plastics on um, marine life and also uh, on our own uh, health and future. And they are the guardians of the sea. We hope uh, that a lot of them will take this uh, conservation ethics along uh, to their homes and inspire others uh, to do the same. Good. So in, in uh, summarizing, uh, we have training programs, very practical, customized training. Uh, we do field conservation in seven sites, five in Indonesia and two in Timor-Leste, and try to leverage our work through those learning networks. So we try to connect women leaders, local government executives, marine protected area managers, uh, so they can maximize their sharing and learning among them and help establish partnerships with, between communities, governments, and also the private sector. And with our new center in uh, Sanur, um, we established it in 2017. We hope to have more outreach to the larger public to amplify our programs at different levels, from the national to the global and also at the local level. So these are some um, things we can uh, offer at the center in Samur. Uh, there's a deep dive pool, more than four and a half meters, where uh, you can have um, dive lessons and learn about coral monitoring programs. We have uh, a lot of other learning activities related to uh, conservation. And I will go a bit in more detail about the others that you see here. So Art and Science is a great uh, program where we engage the artists, um, in this case, Courtney Madison, she's an established a ceramic artist and marine biologist who made a beautiful monumental coral installation at the center with uh, local artists from Bali and 400 volunteers. And wow. it's a great way yeah, to instill the, um, the beauty, but also the fragility of the uh, coral reef ecosystems. And it's called the coral universe depicting the six coral swirls or the six coral, country, uh, coral uh, triangle countries, but in the middle, a bullseye for marine biodiversity. And it was launched at the, just before the Our Ocean Conference in 2018 with the International Coral Reef Initiative. And Sylvia Earl was also able to uh, visit us at the time and generated a lot of interest and people can still see this at the center and learn about the coral life forms while walking through it. The other very interesting uh, outreach program we have is the Wayang Samudra or Ocean Puppets, building on a more than century old tradition of communities using uh, shadow puppets to have uh, a dialogue and raise issues in the community. And we uh, designed 34 um, puppets uh, depicting marine life, like the octopus, the groupers, and, uh, the ornamental fish, and the dalang or puppeteer is uh, providing a great narrative about the issues in the oceans, for example, plastic pollution, wow. overfishing. 
and invites the community to um, enter into a in discussion about this. And this was a performance in Musa Lombon also, and more than 300 people sat at the beach. And it's a great way to engage the people. And they uh, really uh, committed uh, to help address the issues together with the other uh, stakeholders. And then um, from the traditional, we go more to a, 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 a technical game that is aimed for the millennials. So we try to also engage younger people in conservation. This is a escape room, a great game. Uh, you have to enter into a space and you have to save the coral reefs in one hour. And it takes leadership, team building, but also uh, thinking out of the box to get out of it because you have to resolve puzzles. But in the, in the process, you learn a lot about coral reef diversity, the threats and the solutions. And I'm very happy to say that we launched a new one um, just recently, a second escape room on plastic danger. And uh, going through this, you have to uh, try to um, get the oceans plastic free and save the turtles. But again, in the process, you learn a lot about the different types of plastics, how to reduce, reuse, recycle it and uh, what we all can do to, together to minimize the impact of plastics in the oceans. And then uh, in uh, summary, some other learning activities, a um, lot of groups uh, pass through for uh, nice uh, coral clay um, workshops or specific games we can organize for school children. We also run the ocean puppet shows there in the, in the center. And, and there's also special program on Adopting a coral, this is in collaboration with the local communities and the management unit in Nusa Penida uh, to adopt a coral to help rehabilitate coral reefs at Nusa Penida Island. And um, this is a great way, again, to support conservation, the communities, and uh, raise the outreach uh, with tourist visitors and other interested groups. So we really hope that you can all uh, visit us at the center and. If you have any questions, uh, do contact us. You, you see our websites and uh, we look forward uh, to see you and welcome you in Sandor or at any of our field conservation sites. Thank you so much. Thank Excellent. you. That was a great uh, presentation and uh, such a great uh, work that yeah. actually you are doing over there across uh, Indonesia and Timor-Leste. And, and around the area. It's also great that you're bringing in uh, a lot of the women into mm. it, the local women, because they are, as you say, a very important part of every community. And um, mostly when you see the fishing and things like that, you don't, um, you think of the local men doing it, but by bringing in and empowering the women, they're, they're having more say and maybe a little bit more organizational skills to, uh, to, to work with uh, in the local communities. <laughs> Yeah, they're very committed and it's a great pleasure to, to work with them and uh, they can engage a lot of people in their efforts. Um, yes. And they're very yeah, conscientious also with um, handling money and also dealing with uh, the marketing issues. So it's, it's great to see that and it empowers them to have a better role um, in this work. That's great. So when uh, you first approach uh, a new community, uh, I believe that uh, maybe some of them are quite skeptical about what uh, uh, you guys are coming in and uh, generally like how is their response and uh, how how long does it take for them to start to embrace uh, um, your um, conservation activities in the area? Yeah, great question. Uh, thanks you guys. Um, it really depends on the history of the area. Um, for example, you know, in Nusa Penida, it took us two years actually to get all the 16 communities uh, supportive of uh, the Nusa Penida Marine Protected Area concept. Um, it's of course a lot about explaining uh, why it's needed and, and uh, how they could engage, how they could benefit, what is at stake. And it really it's about building trust. So it's very hard to put a time limit on that. It requires a lot of uh, presence of the team on the ground and also um, frankly um, the best uh, way to actually engage people is to show uh, examples and also to engage them in activities that they can really see uh, the benefits so 
uh, in some cases, it takes two years. In other cases, it can be uh, quicker because people are uh, uh, less, you know, haunted by uh, failed attempts before that and more open to, um, to try things. But it's often a, a combination of um, explaining clearly in their um, language, in their perspectives, what the marine protect area uh, means. And for example, in the Banda Islands, they have been closing and opening uh, areas in the marine environment uh, for many years in their culture to actually, uh, for example, regain a trochus population. Um, and they understand that concept that you have to close off an area so you can actually have a better harvest uh, afterwards. So if you can use those um, uh, elements in their marine tenure with the environment in the concept of a marine area, uh, it aligns it very well with their culture and understanding and building also on their vast knowledge of, of the area. So it's really about trying to look at the uh, culture, how they um, you know, communicate about this and how we can empower that. In the yeah, and uh, yeah. I was very um, impressed uh, by what you're just saying, uh, how you apply, for instance, the, the puppeteerians uh, show uh, in the Bali community. So that's a way that has been carried on, uh, a tradition that has been carried on by many generations, how to be storyteller. And uh, you created a story mm -hmm. about how it's important to preserve the environment uh, with uh, a a concept that they can understand uh, more clearly, probably, and uh, embrace more easily. Correct. Yeah, so it's really also about using their communications um, tools uh, to further advance the uh, message on conservation. And mm. uh, a lot of elements are already there in, in most of the community's culture and, and practice uh, with the environment. So it's really about trying to find that and emphasize those um, within the context of planning and, and implementing a marine protected area. Right. Excellent. Do you, and uh, we see that there are a few games that uh, we can actually take part, uh, we can actually do in, uh, in the Coral Triangle Center here in Bali, the escape room. Uh, and um, do you actually uh, give the opportunity also to kids uh, from uh, schools to come over and, and play those games? Yeah, so we have special uh, school packages. So we actually already run those for local schools, international schools, and they can uh, do uh, all kinds of uh, games. We have a special marine ecosystem learning class, but also games within those class um, to emphasize, um, you know, how the coral reef ecosystems are connected and we have board games in that context, but also um, we have an overfishing uh, game that we can play in the pool. So the concept of overfishing only becomes clear if you can visualize it and actually let people or children play. What does that actually literally mean if you um, fish too much out of the sea or in this case in the pool? And it's a very visual, uh, simple um, game, but it, it, it goes a long way in bringing home the message about uh, overfishing and the need for conservation. So. The more interactive and the more um, visual the games, I think the better also our experience uh, with children or adults for that matter. So we're developing more and more tools for our training programs or outreach programs. And we have special um, yeah, classes for school children, uh, but also for visitors. Uh, there's a coral clay workshop. And in that you get also more uh, background on the life forms, mm. how the coral reefs grow, uh, what can you do about it in terms of conservation. So all the um, experiences in the center is very much about learning, but also in a, in a sort of fun and interactive way. And we're about to uh, design also more exhibitions uh, in the center. Uh, so that will also be more uh, opportunity um, to learn about uh, marine conservation. But foremost, we wanna show the connectivity between ecosystems, the benefits we derive as people uh, from those ecosystems, but also how all is connected, how all the 
uh, marine life uh, and all life on, on the planet is connected. And uh, we have to do this together. It's not something you can do on your own. So everyone has a role to play. That's really the message. Yeah. And that's a, that's a really great uh, model that you have created there to, to get uh, this job done. Great. Well, thanks so much uh, really to, to be part of uh, our show and uh, to give uh, this uh, presentation to all of us. And we also place the, the links uh, in the description of um, this uh, show so that people can reach you out uh, uh, directly. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. we get people adopting a coral to help Nusa Penida, or I'm sure they can contact you if they would like to donate maybe more globally for all your project that uh, you are actually carry on there. That's wonderful. Thanks so much, Luca, Mike, for thank the opportunity. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. And now we will go and, and uh, we will connect with uh, Martin. With Martin. Yes. And uh, we will be um, checking on... Uh, um, the green fins uh, yes, initiative. initiative okay thank you really goodbye bye bye, bye. thank goodbye. you thanks for this bye. thank you and that was uh, really Joanni, executive director from the coral triangle center as you could see during the presentation it's uh, it's a great conservation organization that not only does a great job on the field but also come they come up with many ideas to actually um use more and interact more with the, uh, with the local community for instance uh, here in bali all the artwork that was made in the place uh, they, they work with local artists and one thing that really uh, struck me and uh, really impressed me for instance was that way to communicate with the puppeteerian um, storytellers uh, which has been going on for several years uh, as a tradition here in Bali and adapt that uh, to uh, a new um, modern uh, issue and concept for instance plastic pollution or they do even a show I heard about bomb fishing like that and by creating this uh, and educating not only the younger generations uh, but also uh, everyone in the village uh, they can really make uh, some uh, incredible differences. We were very lucky to work uh, with them in one of their project uh, in uh, Timor-Leste, as I really uh, briefly mentioned, in Atauro Island, uh, where they also do a great job in this uh, beautiful island of Timor. If you get the chance to come over to Bali, guys, Go and uh, go to visit the CTC Center. As I was mentioning uh, before the interview, it's a beautiful place. And as you could see, you can actually uh, play also some uh, very interesting and funny games. Uh, fun game, not funny. Fun games that uh, educates you about the coral life and issues, uh, environmental issues out there. So talking about education, right now we are going to talk about uh, the Green Fins uh, uh, initiative, which is also another uh, very, um, very important uh, uh, initiative that can actually uh, educate uh, the people actually in the uh, in the in the business of diving like people like us like the underwater tribe we have a diving center here in bali and they can help us uh, giving us a few guidelines uh, to be better divers out there with a smaller environmental impact and for this we have uh, martin welly also from the coral triangle center who will give us uh, this uh, great presentation on the green fins coming up right now on and good morning martin from uh, coral triangle center here in bali how are you this morning good morning mike and luca i'm fine thanks how are you great to see you excellent man. thank you for coming on the show welcome all right martin so we are very happy to have you here because you're actually going to show us a, a great uh, program, which is the Green Fins program, which actually can be very useful to a uh, diving center like ours uh, to become more environmentally friendly. Yes, I think uh, right now uh, sustainable marine uh, tourism practices is uh, 
key and part of the movement to uh, protect coastal and marine uh, biodiversity in this region, especially in Coral Triangle area. So the Green Fins program that promoting uh, environmentally friendly code of conduct yep. is uh, not only to protect it, uh, marine biodiversity and marine life, as well as to sustain the diving and snorkeling uh, business industry itself. Yeah, the, the, the two things come uh, hand in hand. If we have a destroyed environment, uh, we don't actually profit well also from diving in there, right? Exactly, mm -mm. yes, correct. Cool. Yeah. So let's jump straight into the, the, the presentation and um, tell us like a few things that maybe, uh, first of all, tell us what is the, the, the Green Fins uh, initiative first. Yeah, the uh, Green Fins actually initiated by uh, United Environmental, United Nation Environmental Programs, uh, UNEP, in terms of uh, promoting sustainable marine tourism practices for especially for diving and snorkeling industry uh, through uh, promoting and providing environmentally friendly guidelines for diving and snorkeling activity. And then this is the mission of the Green Pins uh, to protect and conserve coral reefs and establishing and implementing environmentally friendly guidelines to promote and sustainable diving and snorkeling tourism industry. Because uh, coral reef and marine environment is a vital asset for diving and snorkeling industry. With uh, protecting the coral reef and marine environment, it means also protected your business. That's right. Yeah, we'll sustain your your. Uh, dive and snorkeling business. And then the question, who is Greenfins? What is Greenfins actually? The, the Greenfin is, uh, as I mentioned before, initiated by United Nations Environmental Programs and then internationally uh, working together with Rip World Foundation as uh, implementing agency or uh, Greenfins International Coordinators and then report foundations uh, that based in UK working with different organizations uh, in the countries, like uh, working with the government, working with NGOs and others organization. And in Indonesia, uh, my organization, Coral Triangle Center, CTC, uh, pointed as national coordinators to implement a Green Fins program in Indonesia. Awesome. And yeah, CTC working together with the uh, government in Indonesia, and then as well as the the important is also working together with uh, diving and snorkeling uh, industry in Indonesia to implement the Green Pins program. So the Green Pins is a movement. The Green Pins is a networks. Right. The Green Pin is not single organization, but this is uh, uh, initiative through the network. So who is Green Pin? Green Pin is us. All right. Green Pin is uh, dev centers together with NGO and government working together. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, the code of conduct of the Green Pins. There are 15 uh, code of conduct of the green pins that need to be followed by dive or snorkeling centers when they are applied to be active members of the, the green pins. There is a do and don'ts uh, for dive center and also for uh, dive divers or dive guide following the green fins uh, code of conduct that would like to protect or have a purpose to protect the marine environment. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. And 
Yeah. Can you and list us uh, this, uh, like, um, hang on a second, let's stop in there. Like, a couple of okay. uh, things that, um, for instance, is important to do. Like, there are seven things. What are those things? Because it's a little bit written in small in here. Maybe, like, some of our viewers are not actually able to, to read. Tell me about, like, okay. uh, seven things that we can uh, do to be more um, environmentally friendly. Yeah, the the code of conduct, uh, several uh, example code of conduct from the Greenpeace, like uh, please avoid to using uh, anchoring on the coral when you uh, diving in uh, diving site. And then another uh, example for the code of conduct is uh, no a plastic that you can bring to to the sea right. like yeah uh, changing your uh, water bottles and then also lunch box with uh, yeah. more environmental friendly uh, uh, stuff so to ditch a single use and, plastic yes uh, avoid to uh, use a single use uh, uh, plastic mm -hmm. and then the other likes uh, no touching policy so when you're diving, please not uh, touching anything, not chasing marine animal. Right. Especially when you bring your camera or video under the water, please carefully uh, watching your fins, watching your uh, camera, not harassment mm -hmm. of the marine life when you take a picture. Right. No poking the yeah, and other, yeah, yeah, and also other example like uh, even how you operate your uh, dive centers, uh, for example, uh, about waste management system in your dive center, where you dump your waste uh, from the dive center. Do you separate uh, organic and unorganic uh, waste? Is there any uh, recycling facilities that you uh, working together where you, for example, what is the material you use to clean your equipment after mm -hmm. uh, diving? Is that using a chemical things that can uh, flow to, to the sea and then harms the marine uh, animal and biota uh, at the end? And then, uh, many uh, set of the code of conduct that's 15 uh, code of conduct that uh, dive operators or snorkeling operators can can be followed Impo even the, the the small thing like the uh, the briefing before dive right that also in uh, important because sometimes the diving and snorkeling industry when giving briefing uh, really focus on safety uh, content right and the, and the second really focus on a profile of the dive site. That's right. But limited uh, dive center or snorkel center that add with environmental uh, content. Yeah. This is simple thing, but bringing significant impact like a place not, not touching, place right. not chasing. Yeah. yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it needs to be reminded, you know, like all the time, even if we sometimes uh, sound like uh, a broken record, we still have to tell to our divers, it's our responsibility is to always make sure that they know that we don't want them to uh, take uh, or act with that sort of uh, behavior, like chasing animals or uh, uh, putting hands okay. on the corals, uh, broken break corals with the fins and things like that so it's very very important uh, uh, to give briefings out there which are complete like uh, you were just saying here yeah uh, the, the key is green spins would like to uh, also promote the responsible diving behavior you become responsible uh, diver uh, to become like a role model uh, when you diving uh, with your body or uh, groups, your distance uh, on the coral reef, not too close, as well as if you found a plastic or a waste down there, you uh, collect it 
that's uh, the role model for others uh, diver as part of the uh, responsible diving behavior. And then not only briefing, but when you look your groups of diver, for example, doing something uh, not correct uh, related with the environment or disturb the environment, uh, please immediately correct them to mm -hmm. remind them uh, nicely, of course. Uh, to, this is also part of the education for for the people mm -hmm. because green, green fins believe that the behavior of the diver under the waters will also depend on with the uh, dive center regulation where they are uh, diving with. Absolutely. So if they giving briefing and then uh, correct them immediately under the water when doing something uh, can uh, harmful the environment, but also explain to right. your uh, diver, not only just don't do this, don't do that, but you explain why uh, uh, you can uh, not do, do that. With this all, you can also uh, educate the uh, divers uh, toward the responsible diving uh, behavior and even also can you can put uh, many materials uh, from the green fins that you can download free free uh, from the website and video also in your dive center so people can read while they are waiting for example for registration or whatever that's also part of the 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 education. This is the example of the materials. Mm -hmm. So many uh, posters. posters. Yeah, and also icons that maybe people like you said that uh, 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 the 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 code of conduct is not readable, and Greenfins provide with the icons. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I icon is uh, more universal, so people can easily to understand about the meaning of uh, the code of conduct rather than you read uh, some uh, papers with uh, a small letter for example so people can Absolutely. or we are too late yeah too lazy to read and in this all uh, materials are provided in different languages mm -hmm. there is a mandarin language as well beside uh, English and also some of material in Spain, Spain, Spanish, Spain, and also in in Bahasa. Okay, in, gotcha. in, in Indonesia. And yeah. this is this this is actually so posters like this are great. You can, uh, uh, for instance, uh, keep them on on the boat inside, and actually the dive master can even say, okay, guys, point them out and say, make sure that we don't do this, 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 and this uh, in this place uh, or generally that uh, it, it's a very good tool that they can use to to implement uh, uh, to to give that message out exactly luca and then uh, that what some active members of the green pins do they put in dive center and the, their boat and then use that material as a briefing right. uh, material for their guests and then that's make making the briefing uh, more easy uh, for the diver to to understand. To understand. And then the next, yeah, this is the icons of the green fins with the symbol, with the visual, so people easy to to look and then understand about the green fins uh, code of conduct. And then many questions from dive operators as snorkel operators what is the benefit to become a green team members mm -hmm. what what's yeah this is uh, business what is benefit benefit is a uh, key actually uh, become this uh, green fence member there are several benefits one is uh, uh, become green team members means you also giving contribution to protect the coral reef which is uh, vital assets your business because your office is not a dive center but the sea the coral reef is your office the real office right right for you so with uh, become green Fin members means you protect the coral reef but also means protect your office protect your 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 business exactly 
it's yeah benefit uh, to become a good Greenpeace member. And then the second, you will get uh, free promotions and also free materials, like I said, uh, so many materials in uh, Greenpeace uh, website, uh, poster, fact sheets, even the videos, short videos that uh, people can uh, free download from there, so they can use it to to their dive centers or uh, the divers. And then the promotions, uh, the Greenfins uh, website uh, annually uh, visiting uh, by about 1 million uh, visitors. And then when you are become uh, Greenfin members, your dive center will be uh, promoting into this website. All right. That's, then, that's yeah, not a small uh, benefit. It's quite uh, good, actually. Yes. And then usually the diver from around the world that would like to dive in, in a certain country where they are, don't know uh, or don't have any information about the dive center, usually they are visiting the Greenfin website and then look uh, which dive center become uh, active members of the Greenfins and then they contact that uh, right. dive center to, to diving with. And this is also part of the promotion. And then the last if you are become uh, the top 10 of the green pin based of based of based on your score you will get uh, 360 uh, blue and green awards and this is uh, usually announced in in one of the biggest uh, diving exhibition in singapore okay. uh, every year at yeah annually at adex so with adex yes yeah, uh, yeah so with the, uh, this uh, promotion, this is also will bring uh, benefit for your uh, dive center. And then the third, you will your crew and your staff uh, will get a free trainings uh, related with the uh, Greenfin's code of conduct. So you will get uh, what's uh, sufficient informations. Uh, clearly information about what is the Greenfin's uh, of conduct and then how to to implement it uh, to achieve a better uh, management of your uh, dive center. And then this is the process to become uh, a Greenfin members. The Greenfin's program is the free of charge. This is a oh, free good. of charge uh, program. Yes, there is no annual fee for these uh, uh, programs. You just uh, register with uh, filling up the registration form and then send it to to me, to, to CTC. And then I will put it in database as an uh, interest member. And after that, we can make appointment to uh, the date, on the date when we would like to do assessment process to yeah. your dive yeah. center. Yeah, this is actually the assessment is usually is uh, uh, one or two green pin assessor come to your dive center and then doing assessment, join with your regular diving trips. Right. And then after that, continue with the uh, training for your staff. That's only one hour training, not too long. And then the last uh, session is uh, giving feedbacks from the assessment result to the managers of or the owners. And then to discuss about is it possible to improve your uh, dive center management based on the assessment result. W once it's agree, then we will uh, scoring it and then announce uh, your uh, result. And then you will uh, become active members of the Greenfins, and then you will receive the certificates of the Greenfins member from the United Nations Environmental Program. Awesome. And then, yeah, and then this process is uh, repeating annually. This is to look uh, your progress, your improvement. So you will getting better and better. And uh, usually in the second or third years of uh, assessment, the dive centers is already uh, getting uh, very very good or better score related with uh, green fins. Uh, All right. It's meaning yeah. It's meaning it's meaning uh, you giving less impact right. to uh, marine right. environment. Right. Yeah. That's that's the mechanism of the 
membership of the Greenfinch, and then the score of the Greenfinch itself from zero to 330. Okay, so lo lots of um, yeah. re requirements or like, how do you say, like yeah. uh, points, regulations. regulations and criteria. Yeah, but, be. right, right, you, you're correct. But the, the, the code of conduct itself is not, not actually not uh, to to make the debt center is uh, for example get into the difficulties usually something easy to do uh, will bring a significant impact like uh, environmentally briefing to your yeah. guests before right. changing uh, cleaning diving. materials that's right changing cleaning material yes that's not not costly, not costly uh, recommendation, not uh, costly feedback for the debt center. So from our experience, all debt center uh, can follow the, the code of conduct and implement in, in their uh, diving operation. Now, that's uh, the, the, how the green pins uh, mechanism. Yeah. And also assessment process. Yeah. And is it available for all dive centers around the world, or is there only certain countries that Greenfins is active in? Do you know? Yeah, that's a good question, uh, Mike. Uh, so far, Greenfins uh, implement in uh, 11 countries, included uh, Indonesia and mostly in uh, Southeast Asia, as well as in uh, Central America. Uh, like Caribbean, uh, and there are about 700 uh, members uh, so far right now, uh, dive centers, and then why Greenfin choose those area or region as uh, focus of the Greenfin because uh, those region has uh, very fast uh, development of the marine tourism industry, especially right. for diving and snorkeling industry. That's why it's very important to promoting environmentally friendly code of conduct for diving and snorkeling activity. That's right. And that's, a, I mean, is a awesome uh, initiative for under many aspects. First of all, it's free, like you were mentioning that. The second, also give me the chance, let's say as a manager, to have uh, some external people to come in and basically saying to uh, my staff members uh, things that I've been already maybe telling them before, which is very important, but now you have also some, an organization coming in saying the same things and that and spending some time training them for free. It's, uh, I mean, it's no brainer. Everybody should kind of uh, apply for this uh, Green Fins uh, uh, program for sure. Yes. Yeah, uh, and then this is a global initiative. Right. So when you involve with the Green Pins activities, you connect with a global initiative, global network. This is not single mm -hmm. organization program like CTC or others organization, but this is a United Nations right. uh, initiative through the networks, not single organization. So you really will connect with the uh, uh, global uh, networks and then you write Luca one of the code of conduct of the Greenpeace also how you uh, promote uh, environmentally friendly activities within your dive centers yeah. to your not only to your guests but also uh, not only to your staff but also to your guests right. Right. like uh, routinely or periodically conduct uh, Underwater clean up, for example, mm -hmm. or dive center can support uh, reef health monitoring activity All annually right. in your area. This is also become uh, one of code of conduct of uh, uh, green fins. Okay, like, so like you we said, can do something yeah. more than just let's say the basic. The basic would be let's say guys, let's go there, uh, uh, diving uh, uh, with uh, uh, less impact as possible into the environment but then we have some additional things as a diving center that we can do is uh, creating cleanups uh, or maybe a small coral project uh, or something like yes. this and then i get more points right if i understand correctly exactly okay yep. 
exactly and uh, then also for our divers or our viewers right now they if they are planning to dive some places in southeast asia or like the caribbean like this they can actually now looking for if this member is a greenfin member because by being a greenfin means that you abide to some uh, to good rules of conduct yes and then uh in Indonesia itself, uh, if people would like to come to Indonesia and diving here, and then they can look uh, the list of uh, dive centers in Indonesia that already become active members of the Greenfins. So far, uh, the Greenfins in Indonesia managed by CTC, like I mentioned before, and then focus in Bali, Komodo in Ambon, because we mm -hmm. just started in Indonesia, just started in 2000. 18 in January. All right. That's about two years, two years from now, and the total uh, members is about 31 uh, dive centers right now around Indonesia, with nine uh, assessor. Uh, of course, uh, many requests to Greenfins Indonesia to come and then assess their dive center to become uh, Greenfin members, but we have uh, limitation of the time and then the assessor as well. And then also the funding, uh, because to do travel to, for example, uh, many uh, people, uh, many dev center from like Raja Ampat, Wakatobi, Gili, even yeah. Sumatra in Bintan, and also Togian in Central Sulawesi, invite us to come and then assess uh, their dev center. Uh, yeah. My organization like CTC uh, giving contribution to pay my, my time to implement the Greenfins program and then uh, limited uh, funding to do travel and accommodation. Yeah. And there is a good model from uh, uh, dive centers in Komodo because uh, before Komodo is not our focus area and then the several dive centers there uh, discuss between them and then they are really eager uh, to become Green Prince member and then have a Green Prince assessor to come in Labuan Bajo in Komodo. And then they are sharing sharing budget between them. Yeah, okay. for traveling and get you there. And I think accommodation, it, yes. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and then even the dev center that have a facilities accommodation. Oh, you can the assessor can uh, stay there. Stay in my yeah. I think facilities. that's uh, so, that's the bare minimum. I think it's a, is actually a good idea. Togians dive centers they can get together and say we're gonna get here an assessor. You can travel in assess all of them and they can share the expensive to have you there as the whole thing is free of charge i think it's a very fair deal isn't it sure is yes and then there is no fee for the assessor and then there is no annual fee for the green fins right. uh, uh, program and then when you're sharing a uh, budget with your college other dev centers to have uh, the assessor it's mean showing your uh, significant contribution and then also willingness to really uh, protect your vital asset your business to through become a, a greenfield members and with that model making the greenfields program is uh, have a low uh, low budget program because this is uh, free of charge and then from dive center to dive center so they can uh, manage by 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 themselves and then discuss between between uh, diving community in their area. Right? That's right. Okay. And then as uh, one thing that uh, make us proud, even the Greenfield Indonesia running just two years, one of the center in Indonesia already become a part of the top 10 of the green pins in the globe. Wow. All right. That's great. Yes. Yeah. So this dev center is uh, in the fourth in the fourth position right now from the 10th of uh, uh, dev center. So this is very uh, good promotion, not for dev center, it's dev center only, but also for Indonesia right. uh, mm -hmm. as a whole. That's showing uh, diving community in Indonesia really keen to implement uh, sustainable uh, marine tourism or diving operational uh, practices. Right. Excellent.
we can sign ourselves up. Yeah. Once, once everything on the list. starts over again. <laughs> on the request. As we soon as we open. We don't have any diving going on at the moment. We're going to take the assessor yeah. diving with us and exactly. get an assessment of how Im impactful we are in the environment. Yes. Yeah. And then during the COVID-19, actually, uh, the Greenpeace also has a product that called e-dive guide, where uh, dive guide can taking online training. Oh, okay. That's also, yeah, to become a Greenfins dive guide. That's also free uh, of charge to to join that Greenfins okay. uh, online training. Cool. Get our boys signed up on that too. Yeah, we're gonna get them on. Thanks for <laughs> training them. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So yeah, this is yeah, and that's uh, you guys going around uh, to yeah, various some, dive some, centers. Yeah, documentation when doing assessment and then become active members of the right. green face. Yep, that's all I think. Uh, the the, the uh, information explanation about the green pins. All, all right. right. Well, so we, we're going to put the link also in the description here so that uh, if uh, any member of diving centers uh, around Indonesia would like to be uh, part of this uh, initiative, they can uh, directly contact you on uh, the Green fin, uh, Fins link. And to our viewers, uh, I hope that uh, you would appreciate to actually go diving with one of the diving center that is part of Green Fins because it's such a great initiative. Yeah, they can contact uh, us directly. Also, you can find the information through www.greenfins.net. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Thanks so much, Martin, for uh, bringing this to our attention. It was, uh, it's again, it's, uh, it's great stuff uh, that we all like to um, to advocate for sure, like protection of the environment. Thanks so much, Martin. Yep. Thank you so much, also okay. Luca and Mike, and Thank then you. to give opportunity to promoting the Green Pins program. Thank Thanks. you. Stay Very informative. Stay safe. Stay healthy. You too. Yes, you too. Thank you. We'll you okay. Soon. Yep. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. And that was uh, Martin Welly. Thank you so much to give us uh, that nice uh, presentation about the Green Pins uh, program. So. Uh, we really think that uh, this is a great initiative. So many of you uh, viewers out there, you have the chance to actually, we place the link in the description to go on their website. And if you're traveling, you mentioned like in Southeast Asia are the most of the dive center, or if you're traveling to uh, Central America as well, you can actually join that, uh, uh, go and join one of uh, the dive center that actually um, are part is part of the green fins uh, uh, program because as you can see uh, as you could hear during the uh, presentation there are more than 330 criteria that uh, things that you can do to get points to score better on their evaluation 330 those are a lot so if you if you try to think and very very important guys uh, this uh, as a uh, great uh, reminder that we're going to give you all this uh, week uh, during this conservation week uh, of uh, show of the underwater tribe is it's very important for us also as a divers uh, to minimize our impact in uh, in the environment and in in the water when we're diving so continuing using like proper buoyancy skills so do not touch the bottom if you're a photographer do not harass marine life do not chase marine life in general and many many things that you can do as a diver but also there are many things that the operator can do and it's quite important also to if you witness uh, things out there that you think that are not correct also it's important to uh, say that to the operator you're diving with and now you can uh, go and check out on the green fins uh, website uh, to see what are those things uh, that uh, are allowed and things that are not generally suggested to do underwater okay so thanks again uh, to uh, really johanny from coral triangle center and marty welly also from the coral triangle center to bring us a couple of nice presentation and again you can find their link in the description if you tuned in only now 
this uh, live show is going to be uh, present on the Underwater Tribe Facebook page permanently, basically as soon as uh, we st stop, uh, stop it. And also you can find our playlist on the YouTube channel with all our live shows over there. If I'm not mistaken, this was a live show number 44, if I'm not mistaken about that. I think I wrote in the description the wrong number. I will have to double check that later on i think it's really 44. yes christopher i like your message buoyancy 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 it's very very important let's do not get lazy and get down on the bottom to take those pictures you have to take them with proper skills as well and if you are a beginner diver go there and refine your skills as until you get a nice uh, uh, buoyancy and you will enjoy more also your diving in general Cool guys, if you haven't signed up, uh, subscribed yet uh, on our webs, uh, on our YouTube uh, account, please uh, do so. Also hit the notification bells. Uh, also this week, we're gonna come live uh, on uh, Wednesday and Friday again. So Monday is checked. And also this week, we are collecting more and more interviews uh, for you to see in uh, uh, future episodes. Um, so hopefully, we're gonna see you again on the next uh, episode. Don't forget to share this uh, live show with your friends, uh, anyone that you think that uh, will be happy to watch. And also don't forget please to give us a like uh, on the show if you're watching it on Facebook. All right guys, uh, that's it for today. I definitely felt uh, I missed my buddy Mike on this show, but uh, he will be back soon also for the next one to come all right guys uh, see you on the next one and meanwhile i wish you a great beginning of the week bye